This video is about the history, the geography and the tourist elements of Burnham-on-Sea, Somerset, England. This is where I have lived ever since the age of four. I was born 10 miles in front of the camera at Western Supermare. And I'm very proud to be a resident of Burnham-on-Sea. I've got a lot of affection for Burnham-on-Sea. Although I've been all around the world, it's home. I took an interest in 1965. I was at the school on the seafront called St Andrews and Mr Speakman said to us 10 year olds, I'm going to teach some lessons called local studies and it's about the history of the area and I found it very interesting. And when I was 15 years old at the secondary school there was the chance for us to take part on a television program called Is That A Fact on Harlech Television which was an ITV franchise. And the three of us, Paul Bertie and Dumbavan and me, we won the competition on television. So I've always had some historical knowledge about Burnham on Sea and the geography. We were told by Mr. Speakman that the town had mentioned in the Doomsday Book King William I conquered England and he wanted to know what his country was worth. And I can't remember exactly what we had, something like 50 sheep number of houses, one horse and two mares. Then the history took over again by mentioning the lighthouse. You can see the lighthouse behind me up the beach. It's on its nine legs and it's a landmark of Burnham-on-Sea for paintings and photographs and it looks really nice in summer when the sun sets up there. And we hear that Artist Turner came to Burnham-on-Sea to paint sunsets. And there was a man in the 1850s called George Reed. He built that hotel on the corner of the seafront up there. It's called the Reed's Arms now. It's a pub. And it was used by travellers who came on the railway. They came to Burnham-on-Sea. There was a station just past the hotel on the right and in those days trains would come down this jetty here there were railway lines remaining here many years ago and people used to get into the ship the paddle steamers would take them over to Cardiff in South Wales so there was a lot of activity coming to Burnham-on-Sea the church in Burnham-on-Sea which is behind the pavilion up there, you can just see the tower. That was started in 1314 and the nave was built and the tower was all completed by about 1415. So a very old church and a very famous politician got married there to his wife who lived in Burnham-on-Sea. Paddy Ashtown was married in Burnham-on-Sea. And here we have two Georgian houses. One is on the sea front just in front of the church dating from about 1820 which was used by the Reverend David Davis as a spa. Water bores were dug and we had so-called health giving waters here in the Victorian era when resort towns sprung up around the country. The geography is fascinating Right now the tide's going out. It's been a very exciting place to grow up in Burnham on Sea using this tidal estuary because Michael Truman and I we canoed round Stewart Island together and we canoed from here to Bridgewater and back. And I don't know anybody who's done that. So it's been an exciting area in which to grow up. We've got seven miles a beach which goes from here to Breen Down. When I was young I ran from here to the end of the beach and beyond Breen Down right to the fort and back in 2 hours 13 minutes at 16 miles and that included a 300 feet climb. What else interests us at Burnham-on-Sea is that where I'm standing now it's 3 degrees longitude west of Greenwich Meridian. That meant, before the advent of railways, our clock was 12 minutes behind that of London. 
and the railways joined all the time zones together in England to have one time zone because people would measure the time where they live so there would be a sundial in every town and you can tell now that Burnham on Sea is behind London in time because if you look at the lighting up times and sunset sunrise times there is a difference all over the country and we are three degrees longitude west making 12 minutes behind London we've also got here entering the river we've got the river brew up on the left the tide is ebbing or going out rapidly now if you are on the beach near the water, please be aware that we're very close to the point where the sand becomes sinking sand and mud. Please be aware and could all parents make sure that children are aware and also supervised. Thank you. Well that was a timely announcement because Burnham-on-Sea can be very, very dangerous. The tide is going out and you can see we've got mud flaps and the people in the foregr in the midground in the picture one person in fact two I think yeah two people they've been advised and the person standing by the, the water's edge there that they could sink in mud we had a boy here about four years ago who fell off the left side of this jetty and he didn't re-emerge again and unfortunately he drowned and he was found a few days later at the end of the seafront. We've also had further up the beach towards Breen a little girl who got stuck in the mud and drowned which gave rise to a hovercraft being purchased in her memory to make the coastline safe. And every year you'll see pictures in national newspapers of cars stuck in the mud in burnham on -Sea because we've got a lot of people from the interior who visit this coastal community and who don't have any coastal knowledge and are not aware of the dangers. So we've got a very vigilant staffing of lifeguards who are always keeping watch over us. We are at an estuary and it is the second highest rise and fall of water in the whole world and that presents problems water can go right up to that sea wall it's a new sea wall relatively speaking from 1985 and the steps will dissipate the energy of the water and any remaining energy the waves will go up the wall and fall back on themselves people come here from holidays for holidays all over the country people from the Midlands love it because when they drive south of Birmingham this is the first stretch of coastline Cleveland and Western Supermare Burnham on Sea that they encounter and every year we have water skiing championships and what I like about this if we can look at the island out in the background that is Stewart Island and since the 1930s they've had an annual swimming race over there and back it's about 1500 meters there and back and in 1977 I swam out there and back it was very cold and very windy and the sea was choppy. I could only do side stroke and breast stroke on the way out because the troughs of the waves were so deep. And coming back only took me 15, 20 minutes front crawl compared to 45 minutes swimming out there. And in the background there you can see Hinkley Point Power Station. That's often in the news. It's going to be expanded with the help of the Chinese. And Burnham on Sea is a great place to retire. So there's a lot of old age people's homes here. The economy is based upon tourism. There's light industry here. The air is clean, embracing, most invigorating. And it's a very nice place to live because it's quiet. Crime rates are very, very low. And Burnham-on-Sea is located right next to Brunel's railway line between London and Penzance and we're right next to the motorway, the M5, which goes north to Birmingham and south towards Plymouth, and are great links to London. So it's been a great pleasure presenting Burnham-on-Sea. Thank you for your attention.